assemble and disassemble your lock many times. And uh, the trick here is to get to where you're comfortable with doing it all the time. This is a very important thing to have. Everybody, if you got one of these things, you spent all this money on a gun, you ought to have a good mainspring box. So, a mainspring box. So, if you're going to do this, you're going to grab your screwdriver, you're going to stand right here, and you're going to fall right along with me. And hopefully, I won't screw it up. To start with, a lot of guys will uh, take a mainspring out with a square nose box, a square nose plier. And that's, it work. But uh, what happens is, if you make a mistake and that mainspring slips out of a pair of pliers and unloads quickly, it could break. Or it could go flying off and you never find it. So the thing to do here is to cock it, cock the lock, pull it, pull it all the way back. Okay, you're all the way back. Now, hold it like this. Take your main spring vise. Yep. Put it in there. Like so. Yep. And just tighten it down. Just snug it. Just snug it. At full cock. This is dangerous. Won't, won't now. Stop. Will that please work on either one of these boxes? Yep. Okay, now, next thing to do is you take your thumb and your forefinger and you release that cock. Who am I missing? Your sear. Ah. Sear ball. Okay. Now, it's loose, right? So take, take this and just wiggle it out. Like tighten it more. He's got really close tolerances on this. Okay, now the thing to do is just lay it aside. Uh, in my shop I have three of them because I lose one of them all the time. Uh, next thing to do is we're looking at taking the sear uh, spring out. I don't load it, I just unscrew the thing. This is a brand new one, and it's tight. You have to do that, do that. Uh, unscrew it about half away. You'll take your thumb and release the tension off of it. Uh, that sear spring is, is going to be in a little notch right there. You see the little tip there on that? It lays in that knot. So you take that. I want you to do that. It's like I got did. mine. Oh hell! I'm gonna put yours back together. <laughs> <laughs> Magically handle for it. You do yours. I'll do mine. Okay. Brand new locks. I think. I think lock builders torque these things down just to piss us off. So I just didn't take it out all the way. That one? Yeah, loosen it. Oh, paint's coming back on. And the hammer's been coming back. But... Sorry, it doesn't matter. Okay. It's not going to matter. Then pop it out of the pop it out of the knot. And then take it out for us to watch. Okay. Don't want to use a screwdriver to disassemble a lock. Just take your thumb, your thumb and push like it down. Just take your thumb and push right. it down. All right. Keep your parts together. Keep a uh, sear spring with your uh, sear spring screw and your sear with your sear bolt and all that. Keep it all together. Next is our sear. No big deal. Just unscrew it. Take it out. Yeah, see how I'm storing that? At what point do you lose the fly? Uh, about every other day. Um, I find a special place for that fly when I'm building. 
Uh, normally a little plastic cup or a piece of tape, I fold a piece of tape and put it in that tape and tape it to a tray or something. Next is your bridle screw. Bridle screw, just unscrew that and lay it in this position. Don't, don't position it anywhere else. I'm steady as a freaking rock. All right, pull that bridle out. It's on post on that kibbler. And the tolerances are super tight. Is that good or bad? They're good. There it is. See the posts go into the into the plate? Mm -hmm. I want to see those, but I'd have to take it one part on that. All right, next, crucial, wonderful, crucial thing. That's called the fly, guys. That's called the fly. You can take it out this way by wiggling it out with your index finger, or you can take it out by this way, by tapping it with a hammer or something. This is oily, so it's gonna be stuck together, so just finger wiggle it out. You don't have to remember how that fly goes back, because it only goes in one way and it'll only come out one way. You've got a LNR late English. It's made different and you can get them back. But take that fly out. Don't lose the fly. Don't drop it on your shop floor. Don't drop it on your dusty shop floor. <laughs> Don't throw it away with the tissue. You <laughs> okay, next is a cock screw. This is a cock, it's not a hammer. Hammers go on the guns with the uh, training wheels. Catwalks. <laughs> These aren't hammers, they're cocks. I'm gonna tear it my Yeah, you may have to tap that in with a hammer a little bit. I heard you. Okay. All right. The actual metal soft from scarring. Normally, the first time is the worst time. Are you my first date, too? How do you know me so well? Yeah, we've been together for a couple days now. Got it, good. Good. Now, if you've got a, if you've got a, uh, the inside thread is 832, you can use an 832 bolt. This one is not, that one could be, there I don't you know. Go. Here, so I got the right punch for the job. I've got the punches here too. Uh, and we'll use a punch. So, uh, first time I ever did this, nobody told me how to do it. So I said, I can't get this thing off. I'll just take a screwdriver and try it off. Well, well, I don't want to do that. So you um, take. I just want to say, I have the way Wayne's doing it, punch it through, stick it down the hole and punch it through. I've left the square part of the tumbler is left in the cock when I punch it through. So I switched over to this punch, which fits directly in the square hole. Yeah. And that way you don't. Don't punch your. Uh, I, punch I, I don't have you can that. Usually, ninety nine percent of the time, do it exactly the way Wayne's doing. But then, every once in a while, of course, you guys are going to be taking locks and many lock parts. That's what I do. So. Okay. So, what you want to do is you want to position that in your hand thusly. There it is. So Wayne's method was the punch went through the hole and yours and was the hole open. Mine was covered in the hole. All right, um, here's your tumbler. Um, you're gonna have to do this. If we didn't apply the stain, uh, the finish to the, to the uh, locks this week, you're gonna have to do that when you get home. So remember how to do that if, uh, you want to later assemble, disassemble, reassemble your lock. 
the last part Prison. Prison spring you load it you just load it this is a homemade spring vise here would you need the other one to do that yeah you can you but you'll have to unload it slowly I don't like doing that what's a few extra bucks these things are ten or eleven dollars and all you do is just just snug it and then you go back around and unscrew that then you can take the prison out uh, then you can clean your lock up now cleaning your lock up uh, some of these have removable pans this one does yours does not uh, how I clean up that's the that's the uh, that is the vance it would be like the big silers. Um, All their kids have got have uh, non-removable pans here, correct? Correct. So after you get all that off, the way I do this, I, I want to get all this casting dross off of here. You can either do it with sandpaper. If you can get it, go to the hardware store and buy one of these scotch Bright wheels that go on your electric drill. Chuck your electric drill up in your vise and take that Scotch Bright wheel and just polish it. Just Scotch Bright the hell out of it. And that'll pretty much clean it up if you're going to apply a brown to it. If you're going to do a high polish on that, you're going to have to do that by hand. Pretty much by hand or with, with the polishing. Wheel. But uh, if y'all are going to be browning or, in my case, any more. What I'll do is, is I'll torch blue these things. And the reason I torch blue them, unless, some, unless a customer says I don't want it blued, uh, I'm applying no abrasives, no caustics, nothing that'll rust any of the internals. When you're, when you're treating uh, these locks with any of this browning solution, they, they have acids in them. So, to stop all this from working, in all, you know, you want to keep it away from all that. The, the threads, the working parts, you're going to have to neutralize it. How's the best way to neutralize it? A lot baking of ways. Soda. Baking soda is one. My favorite method now is straight ammonia. Straight ammonia works great. And what I will do is just for, for extra added comfort, I'll make a paste of uh, baking soda and a toothbrush to scrub it on there. After you brown it. After you brown it. That stops the process. That, that neutralizes it. It's, it in says theory, it will, in theory, in theory it will, but uh, in, in, in all due honesty, it's going to whisker up, a, it's going <coughs> to work a little bit more, and you're going to handle that. If you do your barrel, you're going to have, you're going to pick your gun up a week later and you're going to get rust on it. What's going on that uh, lately that uh, the new synthetic motor oil cars are pretty damn good? You and I, and I did it by accident. I, did, I would never would have thought of, of the synthetic motor oil, but I've got my mower has synthetic, and I've had that jug sit on the front porch of the shop and need some oil, so I tried some synthetic out. My God, you're right. It's got rust and nigger in it. Yeah. So, so after you brown it, then you boil it. Yeah. Well, you you neutralize first with your ammonia and or baking soda slurry, and then you rinse all that off, and then you go right into. Uh, I like synthetic motor oil. Yep. Me too. Works good. Me too. Uh, I've never heard it recommended anywhere else, but the trick on this is top secret information. Yeah, yeah. Don't be telling nobody else. If 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 you're gonna blue these things, I'll use a just a regular old homemade, you know, regular propane torch, and I'll get them blue, and dump them in oil. Everything but the prison. Yeah, don't mess with the prison. If you want it blue, get you some cold blue, gun blue. There's some cold blue or brass black will work too. All right. What was done historically? What happened 300 years ago? I'm sure they came out bright. When you, I'm sure they came out bright when they were, 
there wasn't much going on uh, with those locks. <coughs> after the after the builder got the lock out of the keg, he cleaned it up and put it on the gun and out the <coughs> I'm pretty sure the barrel probably went out right too. Maybe maybe very late period they were doing. 1830s, 40s, and they started browning. And you know the oh, this is we're talking United America. States. We're not talking European or English stuff. Right. That's a whole different story. I mean, the infield, 1830s, 1830s.